Stro you stroke your beard so often that you didn't even remember physically doing it. <laughs> that is correct. I, I can definitely see that being automatic. Not a big deal. So, Brent, why don't you tell anybody that's paying attention who we are and why we're here? Okay. Well, so, some of you probably know who we are. Some of you don't. We are the Crypto Basic Podcast. We are here to do a little weekly wrap-up of the goings-on in our cryptocurrency of the week. And we're going to talk about the stories, talk about some of the things we like that were said, and maybe sometimes get a little bit ridiculous. Hopefully, point out some things you didn't think about or add an extra layer of context or point out something good that the community brought up so that you know we could talk about it yeah i i pretty much all my stuff today is is ridiculous so i i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's a clear oh, yeah. theme to what i brought to the table this morning does it rhyme with hams yes it does oh man yes it does so i'm gonna just uh i'm gonna just fire us off i'm gonna get us started and we'll, we'll have some more people rolling in here i'm sure so it's scam time, baby. We got a uh, we got another scam. This was by far the top story of the week. This happened yesterday, and uh, it is Oyster Pearl, a new coin that we hadn't really uh, ragged on too much because I didn't know anything about it. Is uh, pulling a unique exit scam. They pulled a little unique exit scam yesterday. Uh, if we had looked into this, we would have had maybe some things to say about some things. But here's basically what happened. This guy, Bruno Block, was basically trying to be the Satoshi of this coin. Like He's this anonymous founder that uh, nobody knows who he is. Uh, but th they they ended up getting another team involved in this. Oh, yeah, I forgot to post the link. Good call. They ended up getting another team involved in this project. They brought on like CEOs. They brought on all kinds of other people that are real people that totally aren't Bruno Block. And they have been running the coin, but in the meantime, he has been updating the code, and he's also said, like, hey, I need this dictator control over the contract because over time, we have to move the peg, which I guess means, like, as the protocol gets launched, as the contract gets built, they need to kind of move the, the peg back to ease everybody into using what they're using, right? Uh, that sound familiar to anybody? <laughs> it does indeed so i we we have uh definitely said some criticized the iota project for a couple of things one of which is that the coordinator's still on there uh i i i'm not I, i'm not saying that they are trying to scam the project but we do say it is really hard to give up that control when you have it so the coordinator's still there okay. they still have some decent control over that network and Brent, it's important to point out that part of the criticism also comes from the fact that at the time people, because when we first started looking into the project, and we're not bashing any one particular thing, you know, it's, it was a novel idea, and IOTA was one of the first to come up with these concepts, but um, one of the criticisms early on was that the coordinator was crucial to their operation, and they responded very negatively to that criticism, very like kind of dismissive to that criticism. And now here we are a couple of years down the road and it's still there. And, you know, we don't expect perfection and there's a lot of uh, difficulties in the development. And I think that the community can be forgiving of that. But then you have to approach the community with a little bit of humility when they are concerned about potential leaks in your project. Right. So it's one of the things that if we had looked into this, it would have been a red flag. It's one of the things that we mention on IOTA. I, we don't think IOTA is nearly this bad. Um, but it's something to keep in the back of your mind. Like, this is still a concern if you're investing in that project. So, so he's still got control of the smart contract, right? We're back on our story. And uh, KuCoin was the biggest exchange that was taking Oyster. And starting on November 1st, KuCoin was about to implement new Know Your Customer procedures which would have broken Bruno's identity if he wanted to do what he was about to do at that time. So he waited until a specific time when the KuCoin team had the least amount of members that could have been active in responding to this, and then he fired it up. He restarted the ICO on the contract of the coin, giving himself all of the coins from a brand new ICO. And... 
Then he put them all on KuCoin and sold them at market value and got them off there as quickly as he could. Now, the amount was around $300,000. It's hard to tell, too, what the amount was because he tanked the shit out of the coin while he was selling all of this stuff. And, uh, yeah, well, the exploit was... Uh, I'm getting to what I understand about the exploit. I don't understand about the exploit, but the the question was the exploit was a backdoor, not a coordinator. Obviously, the coordinator is very different, but the what it what it was was he still had control over the contract and the ability to designate who the director was over the contract, and then he gave himself director power and then restarted the ICO. So uh, I'm gonna post a, a picture here of a comment that is from infernal toast and they actually you know took a look at this and they understand code and i don't so what i said might not make sense and what this says may make sense but basically they just uh they just said uh wait nobody read the smart contract read method 13 sale closed and 18 director lock a link to that Director lock has been false the entire time. Nobody ever called self-lock to prevent another ICO from being started. All hail the monarch. So uh, the monarch, I believe, referring to Bruno. Um, this is bad for everybody involved. Uh, and I feel bad for them. But it is kind of funny looking at their subreddit where they're like, don't worry, guys. Like, this is uh, the tech is still good. We still believe in the vision. We're going to get past this, and they almost are still saying that, like, Bruno's vision is good, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on. That's, like, at this point, we're talk we've are talking. we often talked about the devotion being so ridiculous because, um, you know, it has to be said that this requires, like, a next level of douchebaggery, you know? Like, you really yeah. have to be... Because at the end of the day, yeah, like, you made out with 300K. It's not, like you're going to necessarily retire for the rest of your life. So you just trashed so many people and screwed over so many people. I, wow. <laughs> yeah. For that. I don't know. So here's the, I, I'm just going to read the top post of the day on the oyster. The first two are dear oyster team and a message from somebody. Then keep supporting oyster. Long time hodler of PRL. Please read. It proves my point. Official response from KuCoin, should Oyster rebrand? Like, that, that's what they're talking about. They're not talking about, uh, you know, how how the hack happened, what they're going to do. So my guess is this, I mean, this coin was already a very low market cap. So I, I don't know. They're just, they're going to have some struggles. Now they've just increased their supply by however many fold. I wonder if they can do something similar to the DAO rollback. If I don't know how that, those work on ERC twenty tokens, but maybe they've got some outs. I don't know, but yep, there's there's our first scam of the day. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. I actually remember I, I was listening to some hype on this project at one point. I, I never owned it myself, but I know uh, I'm pretty sure one of our buddies um, had an arbitrage opportunity with Cryptopia and KuCoin. I think CryptoCander covered it too. Yeah, I. I don't know, man. This is this is brutal. Hey, before we move on to the next story, though, Brent, um, I was I just had a thought when you were talking about how the subreddit at this point is still mostly positive stories. I wonder if we could see all of the like right after a scam happens, if we could take a snapshot of the activity in all of the subreddits, and it might look like they're being more extreme, but maybe what we're seeing is like such a mass exodus from the people who are critical. And now realize like, oh, shit. And now they're not participating. And then the people who are still there, now the blind devotion people make up a bigger percentage of the subreddit. So this kind of stuff goes to the top. You know, I wonder yeah. if that's, that's a I think that's trend. very heavily a part of this. I mean, some like the three of us, it, let's say, you know, it, we were an owner of this. We would just drop, just drop it from our minds Just say, well, that was a mistake uh that was a blunder just erase it from my memory and just move on yeah sometimes you got to believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything <laughs> bitcoin where is it from again <laughs> where is uh, that from again thing. oh my god kareem you're so like <laughs> pop culture is just not in kareem's genes <laughs> <It's> just... 
<laughs> who is that? I try to keep up. I try to keep up, okay? <laughs> I, know, I know people are listening to the Bastard Boys. I, I'm up to <laughs> All right. All right, let's move on to the next story, guys. So uh, I want to play two games of Is the Headline True with you guys. We're going to play two games today. This is the first oh, boy, yeah. version of the game. But, you know, just Ooh, I can mind. play that game with my story, too. All right, so here we go. Here's the headline. The headline is Ron Paul calls for exempting crypto from capital gains tax. All right, Mike and Brent, is the headline bullish or bullshit? Fact or fiction? I don't know. Pick your <laughs> funny sounding words. Look, I'm always going to go with bullshit rather than bullish because uh it's always a lie. All right, I, I actually I'm gonna go with this one being positive because uh, you put two exclamation points at the end of the title. <laughs> oh, that that came from the that came from the thing. The, I just copy pasted. All this, right, the... well then I'm going with it still. All right, all right, Mike. Mike's going with the soul read. All right, well here's the thing: the t the article that it links to is actually titled "Ron Paul says Trump is right, the Fed is crazy." So it appears as though Brent is right. <laughs> However, let's wait until we get to the end of this article. So it's actually an opinion piece by Ron Paul. As you guys remember, he was a libertarian candidate who ran for president in the Republican ticket. He is him and his son um, are, you know, ideological figure. I mean, recognized figures for the movement. So he came out. He used to be very pro gold and pro silver. And now he has come also pro cryptocurrency because he's pro private money. He's a small government guy. So it's an opinion piece by him. And, um, you know, he first talks about how, you know, precious metals are better than fiat. And, uh, you know, he makes some good points about the Fed being abusive. I don't think he gives fiat enough credit in some aspects. Um, but ultimately, his main point is, look, the Fed is giving us a boom and bust cycle. And we are going to be headed towards another bust, which could yield a significant recession and a mass exit from fiat into all these options of private currency. And if we don't allow it, if we don't legalize it, it's going to be a crisis. So he actually ends the article with this claim. He says, the first steps are passing the audit the Fed bill, allowing people to use alternative currencies and exempting all transactions in precious metals and cryptocurrencies from capital gain taxes and other taxes. Oh, it was real. It's Boom. real. Wow. It's real. Now, bef here's before we go to like the cool comments and everything, I want to have a small discussion. How do you guys feel about this? I mean, it's an interesting point. Uh, should cryptocurrencies uh, and precious metals be lumped together, first of all? And B, should cryptocurrencies... Uh, be subject to capital gains taxes. What do you, where do you guys stand on? Uh, I are regular currencies subject to capital gains. Like if you trade, you know, euro to to yen no. and you make money, are they subject to it? Well, I then, don't believe so. Then no. And if they if you aren't classifying it as a security, it shouldn't be a uh, capital gains. So as long as it is not ca is as long as it's not classified as a security or a commodity, then yeah, it should it should be treated like the le the leftover category, which is currency. I really don't know the definition well enough to have a strong enough opinion here. And Brian, let me ask you one more question. Do you think that we should distinguish then between something like NEO, which produces gas, or let's say Ethereum, uh, to Bitcoin, which is like a pure currency? Should there be a distinction between those two? Yeah, probably. There, there should be. I mean, we've said it before. NEO functions very similar to a, to a stock. So if if it functions like a stock and and provides any sort of ownership or provides any sort of uh, passive income then it should probably be treated as a um a, as in a security but if it is a pure currency it should probably be treated as a pure currency so yeah what that's about kinda, what about yeah. proof of stake like for example if if ethereum has casper as part of their business plan going forward then you know, you could get some passive gains over time. It, then that, that then count? it should be a security, in yeah. my opinion. You know, because it's like capital gains tax is already 
half as much as labor tax, right? So like, or on average, or like not, or maybe like 60%. Um, so it's already discounted, the fact that you can make money because you have money. So now if, when you have something like proof of stake or NEO, which you could just take a bunch of money and make a ton more money, um, then capital gains tax is already the lowest bracket of, of tax compared to any other way to make money. So I don't think it's unreasonable to say, all right, yeah, if you have a ton of money to put in Ethereum and you're making a ton of money for it just sitting there in proof of stake, like why not pay some tax on it? As opposed to just Bitcoin appreciating in value when it's really just a currency, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think we're going to be in for a lot of different classifications in the future. But yes, if you're if it's Nano, if it's Bitcoin, if it's... Uh... I don't know what's another one that's just strictly it, iota. Th those should all be classified as um, as currencies that don't get capital gains tax. And obviously, Banano and Doge and uh, and Monet. Or wait, no, not what is that one? Mo Mona Mona coin. I almost Linda. said I almost said Moneco, which is <laughs> I don't know what. No, Mona coin is like the little Japanese character. There's a, there's a few. Uh, <laughs> meme coins that have strength it's not just doge people what about oh, garlic dude. coin and by the way uh since you know we like to talk about our favorite comments or interactions so this whole thing is about capital gains on your profits and all that stuff right and the top comments like uh what gains and the second comment is oh you must be talking about short sellers <laughs> <laughs> uh so, yeah, not a lot of games going around. So not that this is a big issue right now. But maybe that's the right time to ask for legalization, honestly. Yeah. Yep. It's probably a little easier to get things through when everybody's not becoming a millionaire overnight. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we're still we're still bullish on all the uh, all the fundamentals here. Indeed, indeed. All right. I got a little uh, story I wanted to cover here. It's simple, but. I've mentioned this a few times. I'm a big fan of this. <clears throat> All righty. So uh, the title of this, uh, our cryptocurrency, is Coinbase Launches Stablecoin CUSD. And uh, we quickly learned that, that the actual title of the article inside the link is very different. So... What it is, is actually Coinbase and Circle have collaborated to create a, a mutual business called Center Consortium. And that is going to be the location that they're going to handle their stable coin. And that stable coin is actually called USDC. So they, they left out Circle in the title and they spelled the, uh, the, the ticker wrong. But um... <laughs> you know what? Good game, good effort, good effort. Yeah, I mean, and there was no, there was no words in the article, so I just decided I, I don't mind, I don't mind dissing this person. So, uh, I went to the website for the Center Consortium so that I could just get an idea of what their tagline was and their their big slogan in the middle of their website says connecting every person, every merchant, every financial service, every currency everywhere. <laughs> so that sounds you know, like I believe that sounds like somebody who's like, you know what? We're the biggest state in the world, ah, Texas. <laughs> hey, uh, quick, quick timeout. Do you do either of you guys remember or know how Circle and Coinbase plan to keep that coin stable? Uh, what are they? How are they keeping it stable? Yeah, is it like like what's the method? Um... It's it's a hundred percent collateralized by U.S. dollars that are going to be held in an account that's going to be subject to regular uh, reporting to a reserve agent. Oh, right, right, like Tether, like Tether, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's Tether, but worse or better. Sorry, that's no, sorry. <laughs> better. Tether is worse. It's Tether, but better. Right. Its only job is to be a dollar, and hopefully, it does that pretty well. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, every um, one of the stable coins that isn't tether is tether but better correct wow there's so, so many banana emojis by the way that chocolate fud cake is getting put on his thing uh anyway go ahead <laughs> continue um so interestingly enough uh the only u.s state this is not going to be available in is going to be new york and we've run into that a few times i guess the new york uh financial regulations are significantly more difficult that makes sense um 
this token is going to be on the Ethereum blockchain. So this is going to be another really big, uh, I think this is another big win for Ethereum as a whole. I mean, we keep talking about how much focus is going into that blockchain. And we just see another example of two major, major companies that are just like, they're, they're putting aside all this time and resources to create a stable coin, like on Ethereum. I think that just shows how much they trust that blockchain over the other ones. And, uh, just one of the things that I liked about this article is they talked about a few of the reasons why the advantage of blockchain digital assets over other assets and the, the list went, um, it's a lot easier to program with. So as all sorts of coding becomes more popular, more common, it's going to be a lot easier to do things digitally with a blockchain dollar versus others. Um, obviously it's a lot quicker to send than most other formats and it can be used in the dApps and also stored locally. So a lot of reasons that um, are big benefits to the blockchain. So this is really cool. This is going to help out the economy a lot. I'm looking forward to how this benefits. I definitely think um, what you said about Ethereum, man, and, you know, we talk about these big projects, but it is such an insane support system. You know, it just makes it so robust when so many things are built on Ethereum that it really... It isn't about the price of Ethereum. There's just such a community based around it that you could see it like lasting over time and then having a growing network and then let the valuation be what it is. If it's based on the network, it's going to keep growing. But you could just see stability because there's so much built around it in so many directions. It's really incredible. It reminds you of like how Microsoft would even put software for free and just flood everything just so that, you know, everybody was using Microsoft and then you literally have control. I mean, you know, Ethereum could very well be on their path to that in, in a different kind of way, you know? Yep. We constantly find new reasons to get excited about Ethereum. Uh, I am going to uh, flip-flop my two stories because one of Actually, them is... I'm going to I, I'm going to share a comment, the comment here real quick that I like. Oh, I missed it. It was, it was flipped on the next page. So this actual string of com comments was pretty long, but I just got my favorite piece of it. So th the guy corrects the title and corrects the name of it. And, um, it's, and then they respond, it's been less than an hour. We're already fighting about the name. CUSD is not equal to USDC. It was not Coinbase's original vision. <laughs> we, we need a hard fork. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> so yeah, it was just, I just enjoyed that. That made me laugh. Next headline, CEO says there will be no hard fork pre-launch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it shoots up right. to a dollar and one cent on the news. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, all right, all right. All right. So, like I said, I'm going to flip-flop these since this has to do with Tether. Uh, one, of the, one of the top articles for the week was uh, that there was a survey – about tether and the survey suggests that 59 percent of investors do not believe that tether is backed by the u.s dollar that's uh, it Fi okay are you sure the title isn't 59 percent of consumers are informed show survey <laughs> yeah so it I, I wanted to put this in perspective which is something that happened to be on my screen at exactly the same time because i was perusing reddit Donald Trump's approval rating is 42.4%. So there are actually more people that think Donald Trump is doing a great job than think Tether is solvent. <laughs> so I know 59% seems like it should be a higher number, but like, no, when you put it in, I think when you put but it you in that term. The... All right. So, so let me ask you this. What's to blame? What, what What's to blame for, for which part? The fact that 40, because see, with, with this Tether situation, I actually think that if you lay out the facts, more than 40%, like much more than 60% of people would say, oh, wow, they're not solvent. But most people don't know the facts. Most people just know that every major exchange accepts Tether. Yeah, and there's yeah. a I certain think kind of trust in the institutions. Yeah, but. I don't want to call it ignorance. They're just not doing their, they're not doing their own research. They haven't listened to our show. I mean, you know, okay. it's on Binance, it's on Bittrex, like those, exactly. that's where, you know, when I was trying to argue with people, they, they kind of made a good point. Like they needed something, they were using something 
they expected it to be useful for the short period of time they wanted to trade in and out of it. And, you know, I tried to talk these people out of it, but they had no better options. And, you know, unfortunately, nothing you can do about that. Look, at the end of the day, the people who have the most responsibility on any given social issue are the people who make the most money from that thing. The institution, the people who make the most money from having a stable coin in circulation and being used for trading are the exchanges. If Tether is showing signs of not being liquid, it should be on the exchanges to protect their customers that they're making money from, from an unstable coin. But everybody has kept it. I don't really think it's fair to ju to put this on the consumer who is trusting the institutions that are making money from them. So I agree we should make our own do you know do our own research. But truly, the people who are being negligent to me are the exchanges. Yeah, no, we 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 could not be in further agreement. I mean, they need to they need to move away from Tether as fast as they can before something kind of goes poorly. Uh, so just some of the stats behind this, this was from investinblockchain.com. This particular survey was only 875 people, so it wasn't a massive sample size. And at that 875, they came up with 58%. The smaller sample of 52 on their discord, I believe, uh, was, uh, 73% of them said, no, it's not, uh, you know, not backed one-to-one, -one, which combined to 59%. So, uh, the best comment here though is it was very underrated. It was by... Uh, v R E Q R Z uh, was that he invested in Tether because of the tech. He's sick of all your FUD. <laughs> Fundamentals are still sound. Definitely, it. It's definitely been a better crypto investment than just about anything this year. <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. Great point, Mike. Great point. Fundamentals still sound. All right. So yeah. bullish on Tether. <laughs> Everything will keep banking. <laughs> All right, that was my that was my t I, I put that in the different order. I'm gonna go back up to the previous story that we had here. Guess what, boys? It's talk it's, to me. it's time to talk about Substratum. Apparently, this is just our new favorite coin to shit on for the last three weeks because uh, uh, <laughs> I love the title. Now, listen, title. We need to do a little bit more investigation because here's the title. The title the title is um, Substratum. Uh, scam alert one person won three substratum contests uh and it says that the odds of winning all three of those were approximately one in 22 billion uh however let me get this uh let me get this comment right cheer because this is important mm. someone did the math and and found out that that's not entirely true it was our very own SGP, he popped in here and he said, "Listen, SGP, <laughs> it's not hey, quite. That's it's me. not. That's a me. It's a Mario. Now, always, uh, always appreciate that SGP is uh, skeptical, even on things that are real easy to just take a shit on. Uh, it was like, look, I did the math. Here's how I did the math. It's really about one in twenty-four thousand, which is not nearly as obnoxious as the title makes it seem." So the same person won three giveaways. It is still very unlikely that that should have happened, but not nearly as unlikely as like it would have been almost a clear scam if the title was correct. Um, but again, we we're kind of making up numbers here. We don't know how many people entered in the contests. Uh, you, you know, we uh, he assumed twenty five hundred people in in each contest. So obviously those numbers can change a little bit. But uh, just this was not as simple as uh, one in twenty five hundred multiplied three ways. It's a little bit more. Um, uh, uh, there's a little yeah. There's more. It's more complicated because it's not that they only entered three contests and they only entered those exact three contests and they were all drawn they in won a row. All three. Yeah, right. There were seventeen total, so they won three out of seventeen. Again, st it's a little. It's a, it's just another notch on the belt of the weird shit that's happening in substratum so somebody my favorite comment other than obviously keeping everybody in check is renzi frenzy which i believe this person may have copied from somebody else because there was a whole uh there was a whole post about this so i they may have just copied these and i'm posting these caveat here we have no idea which of these are true and which of these aren't there's been no sources provided 
I reached out to this person and I reached out to the person who posted the um, the actual like post on Reddit that had this exact information and said, can you provide any sources? I believe we're going to do a 101 on this soon. We obviously have a negative opinion so far and I don't want to put this out there without sources. So we don't know which of these are true, but if some of these are true, they could be some very serious red flags. So fake network, fake magazine. We know fake magazine is true. Uh, fake CNN headline news documentary. I don't know about that one. Fake Coinbase announcement. No idea. Uh, fake experience. Don't know about that one. Fake university, University of Phoenix. That's not true. University of Phoenix is like a, a, a it's a fine alternative to going to traditional education. Um, like, you know, I wouldn't call that fake. Obviously, it's not Harvard. But if you're saying you went to the University of Phoenix, you're not lying. Like, you just went there. So well, we that, can... that might have been saying that there was a university, like, partnership that never existed. Also. Oh, maybe. I, I I read that as, like, the, the founder having a... Yeah, 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 it definitely could have been either way. Fake partnerships. We know we looked into the one by the, the, the National Christian Foundation. That was fake. Fake community heavily censored. That's every coin. So I don't know, you know, why that is particularly listed here. Fake team bankruptcy felony. I don't know about the bankruptcy, but we do know about the felonies. And fake page shills. McAfee and Data Dash. Uh, it's the first time I've seen Data Dash lumped in with McAfee. I I, I did a little bit of research because I thought Data Dash was actually one of the good guys. And it turns out he is. This is he took some money for Substratum when he first started, like way in back in the day. And it was about $3,000 worth at the time. And then he, like, it became worth, like, $300,000. And so it ended up being a lot of money that he took for for that. But but Datadash does not, Datadash does not deserve to be lumped in with McAfee, um, who is, you know, an, an interesting character. Which, uh, when I just did an interview with with Matthew Aaron from the Crypto 101 podcast that we're releasing tomorrow, and he uh, he actually talked to McAfee, and he, he 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 understood our negative view of the guy, and I'm like, look, I might have a negative view of McAfee, but I want to talk to the dude. Like, there is no two ways about it. Like, if I could get an interview with him, that would be awesome because there are <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Oh my god. Uh-oh. So I would not want to talk to that guy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's a Brent interview for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, look, he is the best. He is like the best kind of crazy. Like like listening to him talk is just interesting. Now it, you're, it's interesting from a like holy shit kind of kind of like is he really saying that kind of way? But it's still interesting. I'm a sucker for conspiracy theories. I I love to hear him talk. I think he is full of shit all the time. But I just. It's like a train wreck that you can't stop watching, man. I I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. And so it's anyway, it gets richer. I I've got Substratum bumped up on on our um on our 101 list and just a reminder, they are doing a second ICO next month. So if you're <laughs> oh boy. or maybe next week and we're it's being soon. informed here that there's uh, attention, ladies and gentlemen, there's going to be a match. We've been informed by It's My Strong Hand that, speaking of McAfee, there will be a debate between him, Synth, from Skycoin and McAfee. So, we'll look it up. Wait, isn't Sky, is Skycoin one of those other scam coins? I can't remember if it's like Bro, Skycoin, no Skycoin or is. Syscoin. The one of the two is like another one of the like, uh, the like <laughs> scammy coins, and I can't remember... I, th- I think it might be I Skycoin. Admit, I love the banana thing going on. And this needs to happen more often. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool with it. Because sure. bananas are all, also used to be code for marijuana in 2 plus 2. And really? They're one of my favorite fruits, so it's, this is great. Oh, bananas are great. Bananas are the best. No, my... but yeah, that was the, the that was the slang that was always used in poker when it was like, hey, is anybody bringing bananas to the Foxwoods? Oh. Uh, <laughs> that was like super common. My favorite oh, banana is the... the, the animated banana emoji that's having sex with another banana i don't know if you caught oh, that wow one. that's very graphic whoa i didn't even see that one I okay like yeah so so it's my strong hand said skycoin is not a scam but the develop the devs are silly and made some huge mistakes so yes that I, I think that i'm that i'm correct in saying that that's the one that looked really really bad i feel like we've covered it on a, on a flagship this is the one where like the the developers were like really like 12 year old trolley and <clears throat> I, I don't know. Um, well, you know, we can we can look into that. But look, if if Carlos Matos was debating John McAfee, I would pay to watch it. So, oh, absolutely. That, like, that's like 
That's like Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor pay-per-view yeah. material. Actually, to be honest with you guys, that's the only like when you have a, a person who is totally full of shit, who's willing to say whatever, having them debate a person that's trying to make sense of whatever they say is actually counterproductive. You could spew a lot more bullshit than it takes to debunk it. So if you're going to see a debate just for the entertainment of it, then have, uh, you know, two people that are going to do that <laughs> or two people that are going to be rational, not the mismatch. Right, exactly. Yeah, you definitely want them to be like... So who is the best pair with McAfee, Brent? Uh, let's see. Well, we could go with uh, so this Bruno guy from uh, from earlier in, in the article. But, uh, you know, why don't we get McAfee and Donald Trump in a room together and have them debate? <laughs> Incorrect. They, they're too similar. Didn't we just say we wanted them to be similar? Yeah, but more different. Yeah, they would just get along. The answer is Kanye West. Ooh. That is who debates McAfee. Topic, anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I just give you gold. Science. Boom. <laughs> My dude. Yep. Sorry, sorry about that noise. My dog's throwing up in the background. Oh, Zorro. <laughs> All right, my dudes. You want to talk about China? I know you guys do. Uh, well, yeah, not? let's talk. I, I mean, I always love talking about China. All right, let's do it. So, we're going to play another game. Play all the leveling games that you want to put <laughs> to that are the same answer. Would I switch it up, make it one true, one false? You guys won't know till the end. But here's the game. Here's the headline. Chinese court confirms that Bitcoin is protected by law. Quote, CN, law, China, law does not forbid owning and transferring Bitcoin. That is the headline gentlemen we're gonna play bullish or bullshit I, that has to be bullish because like that's such an obvious fact to get wrong like the, I, it's it I, i'm, I'm probably bullish as well i'm probably wrong on this but like how can it be anything different than literally what the what the law just wrote and said I, all right fair enough we got two bullish gentlemen two people they both think they're either both right or they're both wrong. Let's go to the source material. So first of all, it links to a tweet. I don't know if that makes you feel good or bad, but that's how it starts. We're linking to a tweet. <laughs> all right. Getting now, worse. So what does the tweet say? Well, the tweet says that basically what we just read, you guys, that uh, there was a ruling at a Chinese court that showed that transferring Bitcoin is not forbidden by law and therefore it should be protected by law as property. Uh, and then there's a link to the uh, to the actual source. Now the source is in Chinese. <laughs> Luckily, as you guys are well aware, it's 2018, so I minimized Firefox. I opened up Google Chrome. Oh, and, Chrome! Oh. Well, I didn't have the I don't have the translate feature on Firefox. Or not automatic. Oh. Uh, is it on Brave? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, so that's my fault. I haven't fully fully installed Brave. My Brad, Brent. Anyway, open up Chrome, got the translation, started reading it. Here's the thing. It's about a guy who signed a contract with another guy to hold on to some crypto assets, manage the money, and then at a certain period of time, he's supposed to transfer the money back, right? Now, it's important to note that at the very top, it says that this is the... Shenzhen International Court of Arbitration. Arbitration, I got the definition right here, is precisely something that is outside of the legal system. You're getting an arbitrator to prevent you from going to the official government courts. So this is actually two people going to an arbitration, a private arbitration, to solve a business dispute. And what it was actually is kind of confirmation of the ban because what happened is the guy who was given the funds, the money, after the law was passed that said, hey, you know, shut down the Bitcoin trading and all that stuff and no transfer in Bitcoin, this guy tried to play like, oh, I can't send the money back because I'm not allowed to transfer Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash. That's what this guy was trying to do. And this other <laughs> guy's like, no, give me back my money, you piece of shit, basically. So they went to an arbitration service and the arbitration service in there in Chinese is posting their conclusion, which explains basically 
that even though you can't transfer Bitcoin in the exchange services, that that doesn't mean that the Bitcoin itself, which is a property, can't be transferred like using internet technology. And it basically says under Chinese law, it's still overall property. It's still worth X amount of money. And if it belonged to this person <clears throat> and you don't return it as the contract says, you're in breach of contract. So the arbitration service was just confirming that there was a breach of contract. And this is outside the Chinese legal system. So the answer is it was false, guys. It was Jesus. false. It was a Twitter account that was God. pushing this narrative to be bullish on certain things or to try to get certain stories. But this court has no... Look at the logo on the Twitter account, too. It's a Chinese flag with a Bitcoin thing in it. That's, That's pretty right. Sick. They're called CN Ledger, and their title is Cryptocurrency <clears throat> and Blockchain in China. So, so they, they do the tweet. They put a source like this looked like... Oh, like the whole time we we're going through this, I still would have lost the bet. Even though it was more of a... like. I read it when I first read it. I thought you were going to go into the to the realm of well, what they're saying is because Chinese court doesn't pro, doesn't prohibit it, then it's actually allowed. That's kind of like the the prostitution argument in a lot of different countries where it's like in this gray area where they don't really say you can't do it. They just say you can't have a pimp, so you can do it. But <laughs> you know, kind of. I thought that's where you're going, but nope, you went into into an entire other direction. And uh, and just went ahead, and it was just two people talking and bullshitting each other, and somebody said, "You're right, you're wrong." No, no legal precedent, no uh, People's Republic, uh, you know, take nothing. No. Well, here's a couple of things, guys, that we could talk about, like. Uh, an initial red flag, and I'm not saying that this is always the case, but the initial tweet is in English, which tells me that ultimately the target audience is an English-speaking audience. The source is put in a separate tweet where you already reduce the percentage of people that click on it. And then when you click on it, the source is in Chinese, which why would your audience, the majority of your audience, speak Chinese when they are clicking the source material for a source for a tweet written in English? So I'm not saying it's impossible that somebody would make this mistake, but it's the first flag that shows a level of deceit, which is the illusion of source material, knowing that the vast majority of people that consume that information aren't going to dig deeper. You know, myself included, if we weren't doing this show, if we weren't doing our cryptocurrency, I wouldn't have looked past that. I would have kind of looked at the headline and wondered how true it was, but... You know, they're taking advantage of the fact that we're only going to consume small snippets of information. And something like this is a flag, you know, the link to a Chinese document. Well, you know what? They didn't plan on you. <laughs> well, da -da -da, super guy. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, I had this part of the outline um, where you have the italics here, it's, it's called the the Shenzhen International Court of Arbitration. Is it actually called the Court of Arbitration? That is the title, or that is, yes, that's the institution um, and the name of the institution that's publishing the source material and the conclusion. But even as you read it, it's a trade tribunal, and they're specifically emphasizing the fact that there's breach of contract, and they're just trying to analyze, because again, this is all based on the defendant's claim that it's the fact that Chinese law prohibits the transacting of cryptocurrencies that prevents him from returning the cryptocurrencies to the original owner. So really, it's an affirmation of the opposite, that there is a ban, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. He's trying to use that as an excuse to steal the money. Yeah, we always knew that there was a, that that problem with the transacting. So yeah, that's a... No, that <laughs> this is just this is uh this is just a guy being like no oh, no I gotta hold that Bitcoin longer because I'm not allowed to give it to you jeez oh jeez oh, I can spend it with <laughs> other people but not you yeah something along those lines so anyway uh sweep gentlemen sweep it was bullshit. Yep. We we gotta be we gotta remain cynics and not believe in anything. It's better than getting, <laughs> than getting swindled. <laughs> nothing is true anymore, guys. No, it, it just doesn't exist. Nothing ever happened. There's an entire subreddit for that. Maybe it's just like the entirety of everything. 
I love that stuff. Guys, by the way, uh, just letting everybody still listening know that we have 15 minutes left, and as we approach the end, we are totally open to interactions. We want questions, stories you guys think we didn't cover. If anybody wants to actually uh, hop on and talk to us, we always welcome it. It's just most people tend to be a little m mic shy, um, but, you know, open forum, and that goes for everybody. <laughs> somebody somebody was in the uh, 92% lost. Whee! Wasn't here for the beginning of uh, the Pearl discussion, but what did we think of it? Uh, yeah, we we yeah, thought right. it was. Look, the, let let's sum up our feelings on Oyster Cliff Pearl notes. as like, oh, you left control of the blockchain in one dude's hand. Boy, can't see how that worked out bad. No, like, whatever. We that that's the Cliff Notes. Like they 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 scammed. I, I feel sorry for the entire community. I also he think did. it's – yeah, he, sorry. Uh, he scammed. Um, I feel sorry for the entire community. Hopefully somebody has some information as to who this dude is and uh, and they can bring him to justice someday. Maybe that, that bounty I, coin like can do something. <laughs> yes, and – Again, this is a message to everybody. We should always be critical of everybody. We should never trust because it's not about determining whether somebody's trustworthy or not. It's not about determining whether somebody's intentions or situation is in the right place or not. It's about creating the right environment to ensure that they do the right thing. So individuals who are in favor of restricting their checks and balances to ensure that the project remains stable those are individuals i trust because they understand that ultimately they are human individuals who tell me to trust their leadership and intelligence and ability and intent and blah 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 i'm not interested in you because either a you're lying to me or b you're overestimating how you're underestimating how human you are and how you will fall for all of these pitfalls. So in this case, it was a little bit more malicious. So he was probably lying. I mean, if he left the back door. But ultimately, it's just don't centralize power because people will abuse their authority. Period. End of story. Like, that goes across the board. Very few exceptions. Uh, the, the team didn't know who Bruno Block was, but the CEO is like a known guy. The CEO posted uh, all about what happened, how it happened. Basically, he said, "Like, look, we had, we had two independent uh, people or firms audit the smart contract, and they didn't find this either, and we just got screwed. Like, we didn't know that this was in the smart contract." Um, uh, SGP said Zcash had a huge update. I, obviously, I don't know anything about this. I just looked up there. I just went to the Zcash subreddit, which is not r slash Zcash. It's r slash Z E C. But they, uh, they uh, no. I think I don't even know if that's a. Uh, I don't think that's it. Uh, they're oh no, sa okay, sapling sixteen minutes ago. So they've got uh, they've got announcements of partnerships with Parity, which is the um, you've heard of them before because they had the multi sig wallets on Ethereum that got locked, uh, and he, from the from their smart contract having the the guy was trying or the 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 hacker was probably trying to steal and ended up getting all those funds frozen, um, and then said, oh hey look I found this bug and I froze all these funds. Look at me. Uh, and then, so they've got they've got something with parity going on that they're trying to gain independence from the startup Zcash, which is nice. Like one of the biggest uh, knocks on Zcash was the how seemingly centralized it was around that particular company. So, um, and the I don't know enough about Sapling to talk to talk very well about it, but I Zcash is part of the uh, it's part of all those zero knowledge proof coins that we do like the tech behind so i'm i'm interested to learn about what sapling does provide for it indeed yep sorry about sorry about the coffin dog hang on i'm gonna mute myself until he <laughs> actually throws up what he's actually trying to throw up you got it all right you guys got any more uh stories or anybody have any questions or anybody talk or mike did you stumble on any other interesting stories um, I thought I we had enough. I can't believe how qu how quick we covered what we covered. It's all right. Um, we didn't I know it I, enough. Sometimes I we will, take too long. <laughs> I will be covering this story on the flagship, but... Whoa, VeChain is at 0 0.01, really? Um, wow. there, there's been a donation from Ethereum to the Ethereum Classic 
uh, cooperative. So, oh yeah, this was awesome. uh, of the of the amount of fifteen thousand Ethereum. So, a pretty large donation and a really interesting collaboration. I'm very happy that they are seeing eye to eye a little more. There's no reason to have. Uh, competition with the same space in my opinion think about the difference between how ethereum classic and ethereum have coexisted since like obviously it was contentious at the time but really since then everything's fine and how bitcoin and bitcoin cash have coexisted <laughs> like it's just look at the difference in how people are handling those things it's like insane yeah but you know what going back to whether or not people are responding to the environment that they are put in look at the difference between the ethereums and um ethereum like and bitcoin and bitcoin cash ethereum and ethereum classic need these big development teams and they have these treasury funds whether it's you know a dao or the ethereum classic cooperative or you know all this stuff that needs to be funding innovation whereas like when it comes to bitcoin and bitcoin cash a pure currency their value really comes a lot from the faith so, or it's at least more faith based because, you know, um, there's not a much development on it. So they're more dogmatic in a way because the value is more dependent on that. It seems like, yeah, it's definitely interesting. So we got a We got a great question here that I think we should really address. It's very hard hitting. I love cash, man. He always has great off topic questions and I always yeah. find them entertaining. Yeah, what's what's our go to Halloween candy? So I don't really hand candy out because you know I hate kids. So uh, like you know, I, but about the one we like to eat then. But <laughs> I went trick or treating until I was at least eighteen. So like the you know I do have the the Halloween candy that I love to see put in put in my bag and uh, and I you know there's it's hard to narrow it down. But like I'm gonna try to think of like specific things that you only really see around Halloween. And obviously, the the banana community has some <laughs> what a, giant foam bananas is actually the name of the JPEG. I, I gotta be honest with you, chocolate fun cake. I feel like you guys can find an even better representation because chocolate and banana is picturing up some images in my mind that are yeah, amazing. Honestly, images. as much as you're bananoing, I feel like chocolate fun cake is a bad name. I, I you, you're gonna have to change to like. You know, Just chocolate banana covered guys. banana fud cake or something like that. I, there's no, got to be banana, more to it. Banana only guy. I'm missing <laughs> chocolate. Where's the chocolate? <laughs> chocolate free banana guy. Yeah. In parentheses. All right. So what's uh what's I'm gonna what I'm your... just gonna go ahead and say it. I like candy corn, and you only see it. Candy corn. Yeah. Ew. Wow. Holy Ew. moly! That you are you peasant. <laughs> Jesus. That okay. Uh, Kareem, do you want to go next? Um. Uh, I did always love the Three Musketeers bars. I'm not going to lie. Even the little ones. Those are awesome. I feel like if I had to pick a single one, I would go with Snickers. But I think a vastly underrated one that I happen to like a lot more than most people are Mr. Good Bars. Yeah. Mr. Good Bars are all right. Yeah, I like them. There's also – gotta, you got to remember there's sure. so many, like, Halloween-specific candies too. Like – Think about those little uh those little chalky candies with like the monster faces on them. You know, that's a that's yeah, a very, terrible. Uh a lot of times you only see the colored tootsie colored tootsie rolls. How did I miss that? The the rainbow colored tootsie rolls, specifically the vanilla tootsie rolls are the These are horrendous. How do you not like the You're insane. Vanilla tootsie rolls are the best. <clears throat> do you also like uh licorice Twizzlers, Brent? Yeah. You monster. You probably do, don't you? Admit it now. Wait, what? Aren't all Twizzlers licorice? The no. the black ones, not the red. The red ones, ones are cherry, but they're twiz they're they're licorice. They're there's black licorice no, and red just... licorice, but they're they're all licorice. No, they're cherry. I have a story. I I have a story about black licorice. Uh, you have you have six minutes. Go. <laughs> one day when I was younger, my dad comes home with two bags of black licorice, throws one to me. And he says, hey, I heard if you eat the entire bag of this, it turns your poop green. Let's see if it's true. So we <laughs> ate an entire bag of black licorice each. And it turns your poop neon green. Like, 
completely yes cash red yes yes it is candy corn is the bitcoin private of candy thank you <laughs> damn getting owned there uh but <laughs> i i it turned my poop green it was bright green like like let me see if there's an emoji that can encapsulate this all right so that sounds like side note here going back to a previously mentioned mm. thing he's right i just verified v chain is at one cent guys Looked oh, a wait, lot like that. I thought it would have like plummeted. Yeah, it looks about the same. <laughs> that was an interesting. It's a cheap hot coin time. cream. I'm not interested. I thought it had finally put. Uh... <laughs> well, I don't want to trash anything. So let's. Any other colors you want to talk about, Brent? <laughs> I, I believe that's four... now the second poop story I've told on an R cryptocurrency. The, uh... the, the white chocolate poop story has been told multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, my dudes. All right, any other questions, guys, before we finish? Any last rise of STOs? Well, since... Oh, this, are we talking about stable coins here? No, no, security is... security token offerings. Uh, that's like oh. the, that's the new ICO. They're basically just trying to be like fully compliant and all that stuff. Um, the, hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I, will, I want regulatory... At least U.S. I want U.S. regulatory clarity sooner than later. So... Uh, if these coins are going to be in a spot where they can be regulated via their STOs, then I would really like that to happen. And uh, I like that people are trying. As a quick side note, I do think that that's another argument in favor of um, limiting your trades and just kind of like buying and, and hold for a long period of time. Because I think that the more clarity that there is, um, the more that you're going to be able to make really, really intelligent decisions uh, about your investments and how to move them and stuff like that. But if you start making a ton of decisions, which you will every time you trade, buy out, sell, all that kind of stuff, then what the, whatever the law ends up being might be something that you would have never done had you been aware that that was going to be how they were going to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, we, we've said it before. Regulatory clarity is really important for the United States. And honestly, I think as a country, not necessarily just for us, but like we're we're not getting blockchain startups or a distributed ledger technology startups here. We're just not because of the regulatory uh, uncertainty. So we are n not at the forefront of this particular technological revolution. And you know what? Maybe we're all living in Germany this time next year, huh? <clears throat> That's it's tax free over there. You wait a year, right? I don't. I don't know what. I. I just know that they are becoming really friendly to blockchain startups and and tech in general. Like a lot of different startups are going to Berlin. Yeah. No. That's the well. Good for them. And the, look, the United. We always say it. The United States got tremendous benefit from being super open to internet companies developing here. Yes, there was a boom bust cycle, but it allowed a ton of creativity. We got huge advantage from it, and the countries that embrace crypto are gonna have. A significant advantage. Yep. Uh, oh, we got BTF Banano How typing, so I'm interested to. Oh, and Bantano. Everybody, everybody's Tano. the whole. But you know what? Bang These are gonna be fucking emojis. God damn it. Germany is a mess. I I accept that, but it's the entire EU, and it's definitely the case here in the United States. Banking, quote unquote, regulation in the United States is also a mess. <laughs> That uh, that that JPEG is worth a click, though. If you're uh, yeah, yeah. There's... The moment you found out about the banana airdrops, <laughs> and then there's just like the, the the banana guy, like is where a penis should be. It's, it's good, good click, good click. Well worth it. I very very uh, very very creative. All right, let, let's you know, holding for five years, banana or Doge. Neither. <laughs> wow. I'm not a part of those communities. If I was, maybe things would be different. But right now, I'm just me. Kareem? <laughs> uh, well, I got to admit, I love the Shiba-san, and I love Bananas. So this is a very difficult decision for me. And um, I'm going to go with – well, you got, I, I like investing in big projects. So I guess I'll go with Doge. Another Kareem, solid, big big surprise going with the higher market cap coin. 
I will tell you that I think based on today's interaction that the banana is funnier. So it may uh, it, it may have more of a community uh, outreach. Well, selection. if Brent's gonna do it, <clears throat> <clears throat> did I see the ARC meme? I don't think I did. It is twelve o'clock. <laughs> if you can oh, post that it. meme in the next minute before we sign off, we'll check it out and comment. I don't know what it is though. Uh, I think Scott's going to do it for this week's edition of the R Cryptocurrency Roundup. We were the Crypto Basic Podcast. My name was Mike. I was here with Brent and Kareem. Thanks again, guys. We'll be here next week. Guess who are not financial advisors? All of us. Please do your own research. All investments have inherent risk. See you guys. Thanks for listening. Ooh. And I have oh, YouTube. You're not YouTube. Yeah, we, sorry. yeah, sorry. We can't do that before we leave. See you later. Adios.